Hello and welcome to another episode of the podcast with me, Troy Francis. So it is the 10th of February, I think. So we are starting to get through February now as well. It's incredible, isn't it? How quickly the year will fly by if you don't watch it and you're not vigilant about how you are spending your time. But anyway, we're on the 10th today and I am out and about in town and I wanted to record uh, a quick episode for you guys about caring too much because I think one of the things that we can get ourselves into, one of the traps that we can fall into is one of what you might call codependency really. Now outside of the men's space, you know, outside of this space where we discuss these topics, uh, and perhaps more actually into into the female realm, really, uh, codependency gets discussed a lot. It gets talked about a lot in therapeutic circles, in recovery circles, and so on and so forth. And what codependency is really about is, well, the propensity to be too concerned about the feelings of other people, the emotions of the people around us, and to become enmeshed with them for that reason, because we care too much, and then to get ourselves into situations that are detrimental to us. And it's really something that you have got to guard against, particularly because as guys, I think it's fair to say that there is an inbuilt desire to protect. There's an inbuilt desire to sort of look after and nurture, if you like. And that, in many ways, is a great thing. I can't take anything away from that. That is a very positive, laudable uh, thing. But uh, if it's taken too far, you get into the difficulty of really compromising yourself, compromising your own desires, compromising your own needs and, and proclivities and wishes at the expense of someone else's and this gets particularly dicey when that other person who you are looking to to nurture to protect to save if you like is somebody who doesn't have your best interests at heart and unfortunately as we know that can very much happen if you end up dating somebody who is unsuitable for you or somebody who has a narcissistic personality disorder or something else of that kind. So you've got to be very, very careful about this uh, this desire to look after people, to save people, to rescue people, and you've got to guard against it in your behavior. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Stop caring so much. Um, before we get into it, the usual announcements, please do grab Renegade Dating Blueprint, which is my collection of 11 books uh, about this kind of subject matter, really, but dating, game, the sexual marketplace, all of those awesome, awesome things. Uh, you'll find 11 of my books in that bundle. You can get it for $39. So please do jump on board with that as soon as you can, because I can't say how long that bundle is still going to be there at that price for. So please do click. Uh, there's a link below, so do click that link and uh, investigate that further. And do uh, take the chance to grab the books at that price. Also, get onto my daily email list. So I do a, an email every day. Monday to Friday, completely free of charge. It's a free article that goes straight to your inbox. So I would encourage you to get onto that because it's also my first port of call, really, in terms of putting out news, offers, information, etc., etc. So you want to get uh, onto that as quickly as you can. Again, absolutely free, and the link is below. And finally, do please subscribe to this channel. Give me a like. Drop a comment under this video and then do hit subscribe so that you're kept up to date with all of my latest and greatest content. Okay, so stop caring too much. So how does this manifest itself and what do we do about it? Well, again, I've been reading uh, a book called Too Nice by uh, Dr. Aziz. Uh, I forget his second name, but I'll put it in the description below. It's a really, really good book, really interesting book. I found it kind of by accident really just for an advert or, or rather somebody's post on Instagram and uh, I, I found the book on Amazon and started reading it and it's been really actually uh, useful it's been helpful to me and it's also been great in terms of content as well because it's sparked off some ideas for stuff that I want to pass on to to you guys um, so I'll put the link for that book also below but if you fancy a read and this appeals to you I would certainly grab it because it's it's really really good and it's very helpful it's, it's it's in a similar vein to the no more Mr. Nice Guy Robert Glover type type thing 
where it, it's really about dropping those nice guy tendencies and getting real and, and starting to look after yourself a bit more, starting to put yourself first, which of course is really, really uh, important in this space. So some of the things that he says are as follows. Do you take too much responsibility for others' feelings? Well, probably yes. Uh, you might hear that and be nodding along in agreement, and perhaps you do. It's pretty common that we do take too much responsibility for the way that other people feel. And then a bit later he says, you cannot prevent others from feeling pain and discomfort. Well, that's the corollary to it in a way, isn't it? That, that, that actually, um, as try as you might, you're not going to be able to entirely prevent other people from feeling those negative feelings. You're not going to be able to entirely stop people from experiencing the bad things in life. And actually, nor should you, by the way, nor should you, because those tricky experiences in life that we all have to go through, let's face it, that might be you know, a rejection, it might be a breakup, it might be embarrassment uh, or, or something else of that kind, anger, uh, frustration, all of those negative feelings, those are actually the things that make us Those are the things that actually build character, as we used to say. And, you know, that is important and we can't shield other people from it. And even if we were to try, we wouldn't be able to because those pressures are going to come at them from all angles, not just from us. And you've got to remember as well that you could be in a situation where you want to take an action and you know that it's going to potentially somebody else is not going to like it very much. And we tend to put too much importance on ourselves. We tend to think, well, if I walk away from this person, if I walk away from this deal, then they're going to be very upset and it's going to ruin their lives and, and everything else. And of course, that's not true either. Um, we are, in the big scheme of things, not that important. And, you know, you've got to put it into perspective. But in terms of how this looks in the real world, uh, 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 an instance that you get a lot, and I've had uh, many, many coaching calls with clients to discuss this kind of thing, is when they want to end a relationship. So they are with a girl, and perhaps they've been together for quite a long time, perhaps they really, really care about her, perhaps they are in love with her, or they certainly they, they are, they are, have deep affection for her, and yet they recognize that for some reason or other, the relationship should come to an end. They recognize that it will be better for them and perhaps even better for her, but they know that in the short to medium term, she's gonna be very hurt by the loss and you know she's gonna get cut up over it and so on, and they don't want that to happen. Now, that is actually because they are good people. They are fundamentally nice people, but of course we know what they say about nice guys, don't we? They finish last. And so it, it, it's tricky. It's problematic because they, you know, these are good guys. They don't want to upset somebody. They don't want to hurt somebody. But, you know, they also see on the other side of it that there are problems within that relationship or, they're, you know, the, or staying in that relationship is not going to do them good in the long term. And so they, they recognize they need to terminate it. So, you know, there's that kind of situation. And, and, and what's happening there? Well, what's happening is you're thinking too much about her feelings. You're thinking too much about her side of it or what you imagine her side of it to be, because probably you don't know for sure exactly how she's going to take it. Um, but you are assuming that she is going to, to take it very badly. And so as a result of that, you are backing away from taking the action that you know you think you, you know that you should because you in part because you don't want to to upset her. So that is it's a net damage to you, isn't it? You are going against what is best for you because you are putting undue attention on her feelings or, or, or to, to go back to what I read before, you are uh, taking too much responsibility for her feelings and you shouldn't be doing that. Now, another example of this, another manifestation of this, which is very common, um, is actually approaching in the first place because a lot of guys are, you know, approach anxiety is a very common thing. A lot of guys are very afraid to approach women or girls that they 
don't know. Uh, and they will make up all number of excuses for, for not doing it. So they'll say, well, she's too attractive for me, or she's probably really busy, or she doesn't look like she's in a good mood, or she's probably got a boyfriend, or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But what it really comes down to is that they are afraid of rejection. They're afraid that if they go up to that person that they find attractive and say, hey, I just saw you, I think you look really pretty, I wanted to start a conversation with you, and then she says no, or she tells him where to go, in uh, <coughs> fairly vulgar language, he's afraid of that outcome. And he's afraid of that outcome because he thinks if that happens, then the world is basically going to collapse in on itself because I've put myself on the line and she has has rejected it. But, uh, you know, and, uh, and of course there are various reasons why that is so. He is afraid of his ego being damaged. He's afraid of getting taken down a peg or two. He's built up a self-image of himself as being, you know, a decent, attractive dude. And if she says no, that's obviously going to puncture that. And this is one of the difficulties with, with dating and with the game, in that you put yourself out there a lot and you're going to get hit with the stark reality of the world. You're going to get hit with immediate and sometimes pretty brutal feedback from real people it's not it's not theoretical anymore it's not just you sitting in your room looking in the mirror and going yeah i'm a pretty handsome guy suddenly that hypothesis is being tested in the real world and you know often you are coming up short which can be painful and you know that's something that you need to learn to to roll with but but part of what it is as well is that you are basically too concerned with the feelings of the other person that is you're too concerned with the feelings of the person you are approaching you know, you don't want to upset them. You don't want to uh, put them out. You don't want to, you know, make them feel uncomfortable or something like that. Or at least these are some of the, certainly some of the excuses that you can come up with. And, and they are genuine reasons as well why guys choose not to approach. And a way around this that a dating coach uh, that I know used to advise which I think is a pretty neat way of reframing this in your mind, is to say to yourself, listen, if I had a check for a million dollars in my pocket and I was going to go and give it to that girl over there, then would I be reticent to approach her? And of course, the answer would most likely be no. Why? Because you know very well that that check for a million dollars is has extreme worth, has extreme value, or has very high value. And so why would you be reticent to approach somebody in order to give them something of very high value? Well, of course, you wouldn't, because you know that they would be overjoyed. So why are you holding back from approaching her yourself in order to get to know her in order to date her. It's because you don't think you are very high value or it's because you don't believe she thinks you're very high value. Because if you did, if you considered yourself to be hugely high value, then you'd just approach, wouldn't you? Because it would be like going up with the check for a million dollars. It would be like saying, it would be like saying, hey, this is me, this is Troy. You have this amazing once in a lifetime opportunity to get to know me. Aren't you lucky? But of course, the guy isn't thinking that because he's taking her feelings too much into account. He's thinking, oh, but she might not like me, but this, but that. Well, sod all of that. You know, you need to have the, the confidence in your product. In, in other words, yourself. You need to be like, well, no, hang on a minute. I am going up to this person. I am awesome. I am God's gift. And I am just from the goodness of my nature, I'm giving her this brief window of opportunity in order to get to know me. Now, you know, if she chooses to throw that back in my in her face, in my face rather, then, you know, that's her prerogative. But uh, I can't, I, for a start, I can't imagine that's going to happen because I am of such high value. And secondly, if it does, I don't really care anyway, because I know there are plenty of other people out there who, who are going to be receptive. And so in that sense, you diminish the importance that what you perceive her feelings about this to be uh, and you sort of fade those out and you think more about yourself you think well well what do i want in this situation well what i want in this situation is to go and talk to her to to go and see if there's a, a spark there to go and see if there is chemistry um that's what i want in this situation well why are you then putting somebody else's 
as I say, perceived desires, perceived wants above your own, because you shouldn't be. Because look, in the end, we are our own cheerleaders. We are all we've got. You are the only person you've got who is completely and entirely on your side. And so if you're not going to stand up for, for what you want and for making your life the way that you want it to be, then who the hell else is? There isn't really anybody else, is there? So you need to stop with all of this putting other people's feelings above your own you need to stop with all of this caring so much about what other people think of you because it's it's actually to your detriment now in the short term yes it might be a good thing you know in the short term your girl might be happy that you haven't dumped her and um you know she might you might enjoy another another few weeks or months together or whatever um and and that's great but in the longer term you're it's to the detriment of what you want. It's to the detriment of what you need. And that is not healthy for either of you. And actually, there's a danger that, uh, that resentment's going to build up because you're going in, to, in, in, inside, you're going to know that you didn't make the right call. And that's not going to endear her to you because you're just going to be seething inwardly, thinking, I should have called this and I didn't. And... Um, and yeah, and that's then going to have a knock on effect on the way that you are with her and the overall relationship. So you you might think that in the short term you are doing her a favor by taking responsibility for her feelings, but actually you're not. And and anyway, you should be your first priority, not her, because you know probably in the end she will be her first priority so you should be your first priority that's just the way things go so what can you do about this what can you do about this propensity to care too much well i have a few suggestions here i actually have four suggestions here for the way that you need to tackle this the first of, of these is that you have to be simply be vigilant okay and now that you've listened to this podcast then it should be front of mind for you. So it should be a little bit easier for you to identify when you're doing this. What you need to do basically is go into each day, go into each interaction that you have, just being vigilant and just, just bearing in mind, you know, am I being too... Am I taking too much responsibility here? Am I caring too much about what the other person in this interaction feels rather than what I feel? And if you are, then you need to recognize that and you need to try to, you know step back and, and think, well, what do I actually want to do here? What do I actually need to do here? And then you want to make the effort to do the thing that you actually need to do, despite the feeling. And, and once you start to recognize this in yourself, it's going to be a lot easier um, for you to stop doing it, to start acting right. The second point is that you need to take the greatest care that you can to separate yourself out from her or from the other party so what i mean by that is you need to think you, there are always two sides in in, in, in anything so, so so let's take a breakup situation okay on the one hand you've got to take into account how she's going to feel what effect is this going to have on her but on the other hand you've got to take into account how am i going to feel and what effect is it going to have on me and it can be easy in a in a situation like that to get the two sort of mixed up a little bit you can you can have them merge together um and you need to to the best of your ability disregard how you think it might affect her because at the end of the day you know that is i don't want to be harsh but that kind of is her problem it's not your problem and secondly look she's an adult she's going to live she's not going to drop down dead just because you choose to to, to cease the relationship or just because you, you you want to put a boundary in place or whatever. You know, she is going to live. She's going to survive. She has her own friends. She has her own support network. She ha probably has family or whatever. You know, like she has got her own life. Um, she has her own spiritual um, foundation to work from or whatever. You know, like she can look after herself as much as you think that she can't. She can because she is an adult. She's got to this age in life. You know, she is made of tougher stuff than you think. So what you need to do is to, even if it's just for, the, for a thought experiment, even if only temporarily, put aside the effect that you think this thing might have on her. And you then need to just look at your own feelings. Now, when you drill down into your own feelings, it might be you realize that, oh, actually, I'm a bit afraid of finishing this thing because I'm worried about how I'm going to feel afterwards. Well, okay, 
that is completely valid and that's fair. But that's that's a separate consideration to, to this thing about, you know, what does she feel? And you need to you need to put aside the thing about what she's gonna feel and focus on yourself and focus on how you can minimize some of those fears in yourself instead. You also want to be, and this is the third point, you want to be hyper-logical or hyper-rational, let's say, about all of these things. You want to not get sucked into emotion uh, at the detriment of the rational. Now, just recently, I've been reading uh, Robert Greene, the, uh, the Laws of Human Nature, really, really good book. And in that, at the beginning, he talks about ra the rational versus the emotional. And what he basically says is that those who are too enmeshed in the emotional tend to have uh, pretty dicey lives really whereas those who can be more rational tend to have more successful lives and, and what you need to do to the greatest extent possible is to keep yourself in the rational you know if you are terminating this thing you need to think okay it's sad but i will meet some i will meet other people i will still i will live i will have a good time it doesn't mean you know that this is going to be the last ever relationship I have I'm not going to die blah 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 you know you need to just stay in the rational and as much as you can push the emotional down because it's not serving you so that's the thing remain hyper logical hyper rational um and finally number four you've just got to be a bit more selfish you know I mean and, and, and this is I always come back to this in the end you know you have to be your own mental point of origin you have to put yourself first now, of course, there are instances where you're perhaps not going to do that. You know, you've got you've got family, you've got um, you know people that you have known for a very long time, or whatever. You're not. I'm not saying there's no place for altruism, but in the main, you know, you have to remember out there, most other people are putting themselves first, and if you're not putting yourself first, then you put yourself in a weakened position and you've got to be vigilant you've got to be careful about that so just just start being a bit more selfish start thinking in all of these situations where you feel bad and you're taking too much on board for the other person you're taking too much responsibility for their their, their worries their pain their anxiety or whatever you need to think well okay that that's that's one thing but how am i feeling about this where do i sit in all of this and you need to prioritize yourself because as i say it's kind of you know without getting all sort of hardcore about it it's kind of a doggy dog world out there and if you're not putting yourself first then you can be sure as hell that, that nobody else is so make sure you do that so those are the four uh things that i would recommend be vigilant uh number two separate yourself and put your feelings first number three be hyperlogical or, or rational and number four be more selfish because i'm afraid guys that is just the way that it goes we do live in a pretty self-centered world and you know you can be pretty sure that other people aren't putting you first. So, you know, you've got to look after your own before you can help other people. So that's it. Stop caring so much. Don't take responsibility for other people's feelings. Look after yourself. I'm not saying be an asshole. I'm not saying, you know, just suddenly start um, doing things to, to damage the interests of other people deliberately. That's not that's not it at all. What I am saying is that you need to look after number one. That's really, really important. And um, that, I guess, is the main takeaway from this episode. Anyway, listen, I'm going to leave it there for today because I've got to go and run some errands. But I hope that you've enjoyed the show. I hope you got something from it. As I say, do leave me a comment below. Please do hit subscribe on this YouTube channel so that you're up to date with all of my latest video and audio content uh, i'm putting out loads of stuff at the moment so do jump on board for that click below to get renegade dating blueprint it's only 39 dollars at the moment you get 11 of my books which is pretty bloody awesome though i say it myself and finally sign up for my daily email list where you get a free article from me every day delivered direct to your inbox again the link is below i will see you again very soon bye bye